Hello, welcome to a new video on Flutter. Uh, today we're going to be looking at state management, specifically provider package. Uh, the provider package is a package that extends the inherited widget uh, that is available on Flutter SDK. So all we need to do is uh, install uh, this uh, package, copy the uh, line we have here, go back to your uh, project and add it to your uh, dependencies in your pubspec yes, spec, pub spec YAML. As you can see, I've already done that and I've already uh, run our pub get so that it installs and I've run our application uh, from scratch so to make sure that our dependency is, is part of the loaded uh, app onto the emulator. So, uh, to use provider, uh, essentially what we'll need to do, as with other SIG management systems or uh, packages, we'll need to wrap our application with uh, our provider, uh, or in this case for the for the provider package, it's a, a change notifier uh, provider. Uh, change notifier comes from uh, the inherited widgets, um, and this will allow us to uh, have our state, or in this case, a class that uh, and with its properties and methods accessible throughout our whole application through the context of the application. So the first thing we need to do, apart from installing, is to actually start writing a uh, provider itself. So the provider, because it is, um, sorry, let me just call here to do list provider. Because our provider uh, is is actually uh, the class we're going to use is actually just a change notifier. It's actually inherent to to Flutter, which means that we don't actually have to import uh, our uh, provider package here directly. We just need material because we're just going to be use change notifier. So for that, we're going to create a class called uh, as I called it to do list provider, and it doesn't extend. This just uh, uses uh, our change notifier. And so what we're going to do in here is reuse this. So we had previously declared in our uh, to-do app, uh, as this, uh, as you can see, and as you can see in the emulator and, and our code, this is just basically a to-do app that uh, I've used in other uh, videos. Um, it's a very simple app. Uh, all you do here is uh, add uh, new to-do items. You can edit them by long pressing, change something, save it, and you can remove it. Uh, the only other functionality is showing there's no items view here whenever you uh, uh, have whenever you have no items on the page. So essentially this is using the typical uh, method of passing down through our classes, through our widgets, the, um, the data that we want to access. Uh, as you can see here on our, uh, we have a list view builder that's accessing our items up here going through them and uh, at sending to our to-do item uh, stateless widget down here, uh, everything it needs from the um, methods it's going to call and the data itself. Obviously this is passed down from home and by state management we will going to be able, we want to access this uh, directly without having to come and get data from home or methods directly from home every single time. I'm just showing you the to-do item uh, class that's a stateless widget that's the uh, essentially building up um, any of these uh, these list tiles here among dismissibles and whatnot. Okay, so getting back to what we were starting to do, as I said, we're gonna have to wrap it with our own provider. So we're creating it here and I'm going to come here and remove, cut this from our current home class and add it here. Obviously we're gonna see errors because uh, I've just removed it. And the first thing we're going to do is to be able to see if, if this is actually working. Instead of creating an empty uh, an empty list, I'm going to have to actually first import here our to-do model. As you can see, to-do model is just a, has a string, a Boolean to describe uh, completeness, and a constructor that uh, will take just a string as, as a, for this construction and an optional complete for true or false. Um, so, I'm going to add here a couple of, uh, more than a couple uh, items just to try it out and see if everything's working, two, three, four. And now we're actually going to, as I mentioned, wrap around our app with the provider. So for this, we'll have to call in a change notifier provider. Notice that this has now automatically uh, imported what we needed. 
I'm going to break this down a little bit to make it easier. So what we need to pass here on the create parameter is the context of our application to our class that is our provider, sorry, not this, uh, which is our item list provider. Let's import it. Actually, I misspelled, it's not item, it's to-do list provider. And now we can actually import it so we don't see any errors. And then in our child, we then put here our app. So this makes sure, makes sure that everything is wrapped around. Now, as we can see, we have issues here because the variable we're using earlier is no longer available. So what we need to do is use um, a consumer. A consumer is uh, something from the provider package that will allow us to consume if obviously as it says consume not just the whatever's inside not whatever variables are inside our uh, class but also our provider but also any methods that it contains and for that we're going to take all of this that we're writing here I'm going to cut it so I can reuse it and I'm actually just going to put in here the consumer widget uh, this consumer widget needs to have a type and its type is our uh, to-do list provider needs to be given a provider to know what what it's accessing it tells us as well that it's missing a builder so we're going to do exactly that we're going to add the builder and this builder expects to receive actually let's just double check so we can see here over hover it expects to get a, a build context a t and a widget so the t is going to be our uh, our provider so let's put in here our builder and we'll pass context we're going to get a provider here and child as the widget so now here this will return what we were building earlier just need to make a small change correct this and now what we need to do so our items is inside a provider so all we need to do is put provided our items and we have access to the to the variable items that we've declared in here so let's do the same for item count here and for the item being passed onto the to-do item let's do let's see what issues we have okay I'm going to quote out these two methods we're calling here because we haven't put them we haven't moved them to our provider I'm going to save obviously this has an error I'm going to do a hot restart and as we can see we're no longer accessing the empty items we had here in our home page uh, we're accessing the ones over here. I can make some changes here so we can see that these are actually happening. I'm going to do a hot restart and we can see that now these two have changed from item 2 to B and item 4 to D. Okay, so our provider seems to be working. It's being uh, spread uh, through our, uh, throughout our application. So now what do we need to do? We have our items here, which means we have some sort of state or store, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we want to pass our methods over there because that's where uh, it's being stored. So the errors we were getting here uh, can actually not happen and uh, our operations can run. So I'm just going to cut all of our operations from here. I'm going to move them inside our provider. Um, so what happens now? As you can see, set state is giving error. Obviously, this is not a stateless widget; it's just a class that with with a change modifier. Um, so, because it's a change modifier, that means we're going to tell our app that it needs to be rebuilt in a different way. Instead of using set state, which I'm going to remove here, what we're going to do is use notify listeners. So, any widget that has our item in this case uh, variable. Uh, the one that specifically the one being called here or being used here it's going to get notified that it needs to be redrawn so the flutter knows to redraw or rebuild that specific part of the, that specific widget so it changes whatever shows whatever whichever changes we've done so i'm going to do the same thing for all of these essentially i'm going to remove set state and put a notify listeners right below it same here just a second and the same here. And now let me just copy paste this to make it easier. Uh, question is here now: Do these two new, do these two ones like uh, item complete? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, change the completeness. Does it need to be here? Not necessarily, as you can see, it's specific changing one item. But I find it uh, you could do it in another way. But I find it a bit 
useful to have all of our operations related to the items in uh, one place. Um, now this means also that uh, these these obviously are no longer available in the same context here in the same scope because they, they're from from our provider now and the same happens over here uh, to these ones pertaining to the to do item so in this case it's easy because we have since we have access to our provider we just need to do exactly the same thing we just pass down from our provider the methods that we've now declared uh, inside and they'll be passed down to our to do item and they can be used as they were before our to do item really doesn't is abstracted from this doesn't doesn't care it still receives their functions that expect to do items and works uh, normally now in the case of these this is where I'm going to do even though it might not be the ideal architecture what we'll be doing here to show our example of our uh, provider is remove uh, this the, the way that this is working so when we got when in our item view Whenever we our navigator popped, it passed the new text or new description that we wanted, and would insert them uh, through through this future here. So instead of doing this now, I'm going to remove these completely. Just fix this indentation here, and instead we're going to do this in our item view. So I'm going to move that logic over here. As I said, this now might be the best architecture, but to give the example that we can access uh, all the data in our provider from anywhere in our application uh, with the same context so I'm gonna put some validation here first uh, actually before that I'm just going to create here a local variable uh, called description which is because it's going to be the description this text uh, editing control text is the description of our uh, any of our uh, to do's and so first of all I'm gonna check if this description is not null and it's also not empty is not empty and if that is the case then this is when we're actually going to uh, submit it to the the pop to the previous view but now the part that matters for our provider is we're going to check as you will see so I'm checking if widget dot item is null because this is what we were using to differentiate if we were editing or um, creating a new item. So if a new item, uh, if an item was being passed into our item view, uh, then we'd know that this is obviously being something we want to edit, um, and we would just add it to our text editing control, and as we saw earlier, it would show up. But in this case, uh, if you don't get it, as it's an optional parameter, then you knew it would be a new item. We'd take that, submit it, and that was, as we saw here in our edit uh, view or uh, go to a new view, we would just add, so we can roll back so you can see the difference, we'd add a new task. But since we're now doing all of this in here, sorry, in here, uh, let's do those checks here. So if, uh, if our item is null, then we want to is not null we want to edit so how are we going to do that we want to access our provider uh, from a different class uh, notice we're not we're not wrapping it up with our state uh, notifier provider because we've wrapped our whole application with it we don't need to redo it in other classes we can access it through the context and this is exactly what we're going to do here so we're going to say uh, we're going to go into our context and we're going to use read it's not available yet because I haven't imported our provider class. This is, what we're, this is what we're going to do now. Going to do here, provider. And now if I check this again, we'll see that we have a read option. So we, can, we want to read our provider from within our context. And for that, I'm actually just going to have to pass on this um, type, essentially, for our method. And now we can see we have access to our items and our methods and this is uh, we're checking if the item is not null that means that we want to edit the current task and we have our item here so our edit task as as we've seen uh, expects to receive an item and a description and this is exactly what we're going to do except i'm going to put widget dot because we're receiving it stateful widget so we're receiving it from up here and we need to put widget to, to access it and then we already have our description as as the local variable that we just we uh, declared over here and now for the for the situation where we actually want to add a new task because our widget dot item is going to be null we're going to do the same thing except we want to add a new task and in this case we don't need the item we just need a description to create a new one Okay, I'm going to do a quick hot restart here. 
and see if everything is working. So deleting is working. It's this otherwise we'd we'd get a, a notification here or an error here showing that uh, it wasn't properly updating the our list of items. But now the changes that we've done here in our submission, we can see that if I try to submit, um, we put the condition here saying if the description was null or empty, it won't be able to submit. But let's create a new one, submit, and there we go. It's uh, because our widget item was null, it's going here, it's going to access our provider from our context, it's going to add a new task. Now let's edit one of these. And as we can see, if I start writing something here, and I submit, it's editing. So because the widget wasn't null, it's going to use our edit tasks from our to-do list provider, pass it which widget, which item it wants to edit and pass its description. And now we edit it, it gets changed, notifies our listeners, and this means that uh, it gets access here. Now one detail is that I'm using read here because we actually, when we do this, we don't want to uh, refresh. We don't want to rebuild anything because we're doing a navigator pop, which means we're going back to our view. Uh, we don't want this specific action here to repaint or rebuild our view. It's only when our task is edited that we and change that we actually want the notify listeners to happen and rebuild. Hence uh, the way this is done. So in review, what we've done from the start was um, install our dependency, so our package provider. We created our, our provider, uh, essentially uh, without even needing to import the provider itself. We just declared the new class uh, as, its, as the provider with a change notifier. We put our variable in here. We put our operations that changed our, our list of, of items, a list of to-dos here. Uh, we've wrapped around uh, our whole application uh, with a change notifier provider, which means that we passed our provider and uh, Give it, give it the context of our application and use the, our app as the child. And then whenever inside widget or widgetry we want to consume some data or use anything, we, we just declare the consumer uh, of the type of our provider uh, with the builder that provides us the context, uh, the provider itself and child. We don't, we don't really need to use this directly here. And then through a provider, we can access the data that we have there. So our items um, and the whichever uh, whichever methods we, we had declared inside, as you can see here. And then in our item view, which is a def different class, different view, um, we, did, we didn't We did need to do a lot of redeclaration. All we needed to do is in our submission, without changing anything else in our, in our stateful widget here, we just accessed, we imported our provider, uh, which allowed us access within the context to read uh, our provider and access the methods we wanted to make changes to. And again, we use read because we don't want to uh, Re, um, rebuild anything in that view until actually these changes are done. And that's why uh, here on a provider, we, we use our uh, notify listeners here on the edit task and uh, add new task. And that's about it. Uh, we can still remove items. Uh, our remove item is still working fine. Uh, we can add items and we can edit items just as we were before, except now we have access throughout our whole application through a provider uh, essentially having state management. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe and leave a like if you uh, like the content. Thank you.